Hey folks, and welcome to this week's episode of Crit Hit Reviews with your host, Arlian. Today I'm going to be talking about The Watchmaker, a puzzle platformer by Micropsia Games, which sees you solving puzzles while aging faster than a housefly. A neat concept, but is it well executed, or is this game more likely to grind your gears? Well, the story begins with you being placed in the shoes of an aging and semi-amnesiac clockmaker who must navigate the otherworldly insides of his magnus opus, a giant clock tower that seems to distort space and time for reasons. And I'm not kidding about rapidly aging. See, apparently a saboteur has tinkered with your talks, resulting in your express ticket to cardiac arrest. To set this right, and discover more of the story at large, you follow the really barbed guidance of a smug snake sounding ball of light in an attempt to fix your tower. Cliff notes aside, I wasn't really the keenest fan of the way that the story was told, as it was generally communicated through the acidic snark between the protagonist and his ball of light companion, either in the form of banter as they walked, or unskippable cutscenes the likes of which would likely repeat themselves if you happen to die after one. It doesn't help that at the core of a number of the arguments between your semi-amnesiac character and his companion were allusions to scenes the game didn't actually show happen or even really have you read all that in depth in, ultimately leaving me fairly confused and more than a bit annoyed at just how unpleasant the two characters were to each other. That and both the spoken and written dialogue left a lot to be desired with some rather unnatural exchanges, which only worsened some of the aforementioned issues. Now when it comes to the game itself, it's generally a fairly easygoing experience, more or less hinging around exploring each of the game's rather large areas and solving puzzles within them. There are enemies to fight, but given they tend to die in 1-2 to two hits and your basic attack is a physics push that pushes them away from you, combat tends to feel a bit like an afterthought. Other than that, the main dilemmas tend to involve pushing switches, picking up objects to bring them to certain locations, and just generally trying to figure out where to go next. Admittedly, the platforming ends up feeling pretty forgiving, since you have the ability to both rewind and slow time which also makes flinging yourself into a pit slightly less of a disaster than normal and more of an experiment. For science. That said, everything is complicated by the simple fact that your character is rapidly aging, starting at the age of 30 and progressing based on time and when you take damage. If you happen to hit 90, you just abruptly keel over from old. You keel over from the old. Though, you can at least turn back the clock a bit by using checkpoints and collecting time energy that enemies cough up, or that's just floating around the levels. Overall, I actually far preferred the non-combat section of the game, and the various boss fights that I encountered did very little to change that fact. Given that I was often at a loss for what I was supposed to do exactly, and their solutions ended up feeling a bit finicky at times. Worse still, these encounters also frequently ended up feeling a bit glitchy, or literally geared towards you only being able to solve it in certain manners, with your character outright teleporting into the way of incoming attacks, and then stopping to tremble until he dies unless you proceed in the intended manner. Which sucks. Like, it sucks a fair bit. Really, I'd be hard pressed to name a single boss fight in the game I actually enjoyed. Honestly, I had way less issues with just running around snagging the game's collectibles, whether it was the letters, the, the newspapers that provided lore, or just the pocket watches that seemed to do nothing other than look pretty and have ominous backstories surrounding them, since they also just offered a bit of fun, optional exploration and challenge, yet felt a lot more clever for the most part. Now, the sound was a mixed bag, because while I did often find myself gritting my teeth over the juvenile exchanges between the main character, the floating ball of light that served as his companion, and the hammy as heck villain, I found myself genuinely liking the music in the game. A number of the themes were absolutely dramatic, and overall improved the experience of wandering through the gears of the tower. And I suppose the voicing in the, like, the letters that are being read, were fairly nice, though her segments were few and far between. 
Now, one of the stronger elements in the watchmaker is simply the visuals, because it does have a nifty style that's presented throughout the gameplay, and there's honestly something neat about watching your character gradually go older and younger as you roamed about the levels. There's some fairly interesting enemy and area design, though I did admittedly begin to pick out a number of sections of the game where things ended up feeling fairly samey in the visual department as I continued forward. Now, this was a bit of a tricky review for me, if only because I legitimately had to pause and take a break more than once. The various bugs and bits of boss battle related boredom serving to drain away what bits of enjoyment I found in the game. Whilst I was ultimately able to finish the game, it was not without running face first into a number of bugs that saw puzzles resetting. The combat mostly consisted of pacing in circles around enemies, instantly killing them or nigh instantly, which made me wonder why the game bothered to throw the smaller encounters at me, while the bosses tend to be a combination of confusing and frustrating mechanics, or just tedious. I honestly preferred the puzzle segments and the searching for watches mechanics the most, which is also where I felt the timer mechanic actually exerted a meaningful sense of pressure, or at least resource management. And I believe I've already amply mentioned my grievances with the story and the characters, which should make it ultimately no surprise that at the end of the game, I'd rate the Watchmaker a, a fail. And whilst it's not the bottom of the barrel, I really wouldn't recommend this game to anyone. Anyways, that's all I have to say on this particular title. Uh, if you do agree or disagree with me, feel free to mention it in the comments below. If you don't want to see more reviews or the developer interviews I do on this channel, feel free to hit the subscribe icon up there and the little bell icon because that'll let you know when we're actually releasing something new. Otherwise, I hope you folks have found this entertaining and enjoyable, and I'll catch you folks on the next episode of Crit Hit Reviews. Anyways, this has been Arlian, and do take care!